Hello friends, uh, welcome back and today the topic that we are going to cover in our channel is the ABO subgroups and grouping discrepancies which is uh, going to be taken by me Dr. Mohit Chaudhary. I'm a senior consultant uh, MD transfusion medicine and along with me is my colleague Dr. Ankita Sharma who is DMD transfusion medicine. She'll be uh, uh, taking you through the various nuances of uh, ABO subgroups and the grouping discrepancies. So this will be one of the series of AVO subgroups that we will be taking and uh, we already had a, 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 a session on ABO uh, synthesis which uh, was taken earlier and uploaded. So this will be a series of AVO subgroups and hopefully I think you should uh, be liking this as well. So over to Dr. Ankita for uh, taking us along uh, this journey of AVO subgroups. Hi everyone. So I'll be uh, talking about ABO subgroups today and grouping discrepancies in general. So what are ABO subgroups? As we know, uh, the basically ABO subgroups, they differ in the amount of the antigen which is present on the red cell membrane. So basically, there's a variation in the expression of antigens and they represent a phenotype that show weaker variable serological activity with the commonly used antiseras. And as we have dis uh, discussed in the previous sessions about the H antigens, so these subgroups, they are not very efficient in converting the H antigens to A or B antigens because the fewer number of antigens are present on the RBCs. And subgroups of A are more common than those of B. Coming to subgroups of A, there are two principal subgroups, mainly A1 and A2. And both of them react strongly with the reagent anti-A to distinguish A1 from A2 red cells. The lectin dolichus bicolor is used, which detects anti-A1 and 80% of group A or AB individuals are subgroup A1, 20% are A2 and A2B. The A2 RBCs, they show increased reactivity with the anti-H lectin known as the yellow sphere of theirs. Uh, coming to the characteristics of the weak A subgroups, so as the name defines, uh, it's a weak group that is the, there is a decreased number of A antigen sites per RBC which results in weak or no agglutination with the polyclonal anti-A antisera. There is a varying degree of agglutination by the human anti-AB antisera. There will be increased variability in the detection of H antigen which results in a strong reactions with anti-H. The presence or absence of anti-A1 in the serum is varied. And lastly, uh, these subgroups can also be confirmed with the help of secretor studies, adsorption elution studies and molecular testing which can further help us in subdividing the A individuals into A3, AX, AN etc. Now, uh, basically, there are certain differences between A1 and A2 subgroups. So, like quantitative and qualitative differences are there. Quantitatively, uh, there will be differences with respect to the number of antigen sites, the amount of transferase enzymes, the amount of branching. And from qualitative point of view, there is a difference in the precursor oligosaccharide chains, the soluble differences in the transferase enzyme, and the formation of anti-A1 in a percentage of some subgroups. Coming to the characteristics of A1 and A2 phenotypes. Now here we have the reagent uh, grouping that is the forward grouping and the reverse grouping which is the serum grouping. So both A1 and A2 as we can see they type, uh, they give us a strong reaction with the anti-A antisera and anti-AB antisera. That's a good four plus agglutination. However, when we are uh, testing with the anti-A1 lectin, uh, A1 uh, phenotype subgroup will give us a four plus reaction but however it is not seen with the A2 group. Similarly, when we discuss about the antibodies in the serum, common antibody for both is anti-B, whereas the unexpected antibody, there are none in case of A1 subgroup and in case of A2 subgroup, about 1-8% to of the cases will show a anti-A1 antibody activity. Similarly, uh, both uh, A1 and A2, since they have the secretors in the uh, saliva, they have both A and H antigens as well. And the number of antigenic sites, as we can see, is around 8-11 to 11 lakh per RBC with A1. And for A2, it's around 2.4 to 2.9. Coming to A2 phenotype, so A2 and A2B individuals, they may produce an anti-A1. And this may cause a discrepancy when a cross-match is done. So mostly it is detected at the time of cross-matching. So other A subgroups, there are uh, various other subgroups such as A intermediate, this A3, AX, AM, AL, etc. The A3 red cells, it causes a mixed field agglutination when a polyclonal anti-A or anti-AB antisera is used. And what do we mean by mixed field agglutination? As you can see in the diagram here, basically there are uh, small agglutinates 
which appear with the background of unagglutinated RBCs. And these may also contain anti A1. So, characteristics of the weak ABO phenotypes. Now, uh, like uh, this is again, as we discussed, a reagent is of this uh, formal grouping. We have a reverse grouping. So, mostly as you can see, uh, all the subgroups will show a zero to mixed field reaction with anti A, anti Sera, and anti AB. Some, some of them may not even show any reaction. However, with anti H, they all show a good 3 plus or a 4 plus agglutination. Similarly, the antibodies uh, found in the serum and with anti B uh, is present in all of the subgroups. Whereas a few of them uh, will show uh, anti A1 sometimes and anti A is hardly present in any except for a couple of groups where also there is a very weak expression. Coming to the VK phenotypes, so therefore they can be serologically differentiated using a forward grouping of A and H and H antibodies using the anti A, anti AB and anti H, anti CRs, the reverse grouping of the ABO isoagglutinin and the presence of anti A1 Adsorption and uh, studies with anti A and saliva studies should detect the presence of A and H substances. This is just a uh, tabular, uh, you can say a flow chart for detecting the subgroups. We are checking the red cell reactions with anti A and anti AB based on the agglutination. Either there is a very weak agglutination or there is absolutely no agglutination. With weak agglutination based on the strength, then whether it's a mixed field or about 10% reaction or less than that. The subgroups have been divided. Similarly, where there is no agglutination, you have to proceed with the adsorption elution study with the anti A anti sera. And again, based on the adsorption results, we have classified them as uh, AM, AY, AL. Now, coming to the weak B subgroups. So, the B subgroups are very, very rare and their frequency is also much less than those of the A subgroups. Some examples are like B3, BX, BM, BL, etc. The criteria used for differentiation is similar to that we uh, discussed in the previous slide for the weak A subgroups. Sim this is strength of the type agglutination with anti B, anti AB, and anti H, anti sera. The presence or absence of the ABO isoagglutinin in the serum. Adsorption and lesion studies with anti B. Uh, the saliva studies for detecting the presence of B substance. And lastly, molecular testing. Now, coming to the characteristics of the B phenotypes, now a proper uh, group B. As you can see in the, in the forward grouping, there is a good 4 plus reaction with both anti B and anti AB anti sera and a 2 plus with anti H. And uh, so, but the other subgroups, they will again uh, show a very uh, mixed field or 0 to mixed field reaction with anti B and anti AB anti sera. However, with anti H, it is a good 3 plus reaction. Similarly, the antibodies found in the serum, the common antibody is anti A for all, including the subgroups. Whereas unexpected antibodies are uh, very weak uh, anti B, may be seen in uh, BX and BL type. Other than that, uh, there is no unexpected antibodies. And the presence of uh, substances present in the saliva of the secretors, it's both B and H antigens. Now, coming to the uh, ABO discrepancy part, before we proceed, this one couple of rules which we must keep in mind at the time of looking for any discrepancy. First and foremost, we should always and always focus on the weaker reactions. Why? Irrespective of the grouping, whether it's forward or reverse. Because weaker reactions are the most commonly one, uh, ones which are associated with any kind of a problem. So you should always remember weak comes first. And secondly, antibody discrepancy is much, much common or more com much, much more common than the antigen discrepancy. So these are the two thumb rules. So always remember weak comes first and antibody discrepancies are more common. Now, coming to the discrepancy. So, uh, this is basically anomalous results in blood group testing seen whether uh, in uh, forward and reverse grouping where they fail to tally with each other. This can be either due to a technical discrepancy or a clinical discrepancy. Now, the technical discrepancy is basic clerical errors, uh, the most common cause. It could be either there is an incorrect identification of the blood specimen, the WBWT, the wrong blood in the wrong tube. There could be mixing of some uh, blood sample. Sometimes the uh, anti are used, they are contaminated, they are expired, or you are not following the manufacturer's instructions properly. There could be some non calibrated centrifuges, cell suspension is heavy or light. Then coming to clinical discrepancy, here the main problem lies with the patient. So it's important we have to uh, see the complete history of the patient, their age, diagnosis, transfusion history, drug history, pregnancy uh, history, all of them must be taken into account.
Well, important is when finding the problem, we have to check the forward typing where we test for the antigen, the reverse type test for the antibody. So we have to see what does the patient type in both forward grouping and reverse grouping. And the reaction, is it weaker than the usual? Is it a weak, uh, missing reaction or a weak reaction? Then group one discrepancy. Uh, this type of discrepancy is most common as compared to the other groups. It's mainly uh, seen in reverse grouping due to the weak or missing antibodies. Some of the common examples are in uh, extremes of age, like newborns where the antibody production is not detectable up, up to about three to six months of age or elderly patients where the production has been depressed or patients of leukemia, lymphoma, those on immunosuppressive drugs, or uh, basically they are demonstrating a condition of hypergamma globulinemia. There could be a congenital or acquired a gamma globulinemia or any immunodeficiency diseases. Recipients of uh, bone marrow or uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplants. So these patients will develop hypogamma globulinemia either from the therapy or they might start producing a different RBC population as uh, from that of the transplanted uh, cells. This is uh, basically indicating towards a chimerism. And uh, lastly, there could also be a case of uh, where the ABS uh, antibodies have been either diluted because of exchange transfusions and plasma transfusion, plasma exchanges, or a case of ABS. So resolution, uh, the first and foremost thing is you have to enhance the serum grouping reaction. Basically, you need to give uh, time for the antibodies to come in contact with the antigens. So this can be done by incubating the mixture at room temperature for about uh, 15 to 30 minutes more. If there is still no reaction, when we are suspecting it's a cold antibody, then you have can uh, incubate the mixture at 4 degrees Celsius for about 15 to 30 minutes. We can also make use of an auto control or an O-cell. This is also done. Uh, actually, it must be done to uh, test concurrently to detect the reactivity of any other commonly occurring uh, cold uh, antibodies. Coming to type 2, this is because of weak or missing antigen as the least common of all. This includes subgroups of A or B. Uh, leukemia and lymphoma which may yield a weakened A or B antigen and an acquired B phenomena. The resolution is incubating the test mixture at room temperature for about up to 30 minutes to increase the association of the antibody with the antigen. If it is still negative, we go for uh, testing at 4 degrees for about 15 to 30 minutes, including group O cells and autologous cells. At times, we can also pre-treat the RBCs with enzymes and retest with the uh, reagent anticella. We can repeat the blood grouping by using wash cells, using anti-AB anti and anti-A1 lectin and absorption elution studies. Coming to type 3 discrepancy, these are mainly due to the proteins of the plasma abnormalities and this can be seen in conditions of where the patients are suffering from multiple myeloma, Waldensum's macroglobulinemia, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Basically, there's an elevated level of the plasma globulins and they could also be associated with raised levels of fibrinogen, or patients are, have been put on some kind of plasma expanders such as dextran or uh, in neonatal samples where this is a contamination in the cord blood samples because of the Watson's jelly. The resolution is the main problem here is of rule formation which is resolved by washing the cells with normal saline about 6 to 8 times and then you can again confirm them with a microscopic examination. So uh, this is actually the saline replacement technique uh, which is uh, being used if there's a serum or reverse grouping which is being affected. So the reagent cells in the patient's serum uh, centrifuge to allow the antigen and antibody to react. The serum is removed and replaced by equal volumes of normal saline. The tube is then again mixed centrifuge and re-examined for agglutination. Coming to the last uh, part that is the group 4 discrepancy. It is basically related with the antibodies, the cold antibodies. It's seen when patients with cold uh, autoantibodies, some unexpected or uh, ABO and non-ABO antibodies, some naturally occurring or irregular antibodies which are reacting at room temperature. So cold autoagglutination, what we need to do to resolve it is to maintain a warm chain. You should do a warm saline wash at 37 degrees Celsius of the autoagglutinated cells, pre-warming of the serum and the reagent cells at 37 degrees Celsius performing the test at 37 degrees Celsius. And most of the time, uh, this much is uh, sufficient to remove the autoagglutinins. However, if not, then we can uh, treat the cells with DTT. Uh, 0.01 molar DTT can be used to make the cells free of the antibodies. And we use equal quantity of 0.01 molar DTT and washed packed test cells at 37 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. So these are my references.
and uh, we'll be shortly uh, taking up the uh, real life uh, based scenarios and examples of ABO discrepancies and acquire the phenomena. So thanks for now. Hope you liked it and sub some help. Thank you.